Right, so now's the time to dive into what this actually looks like in a lesson, if that's okay. Now, am I right in saying you've chosen the kind of concrete example of expanding brackets? Would, would that be right to kind of, so we can kind of picture this? And if you just give us a bit of background before we actually dive into what each phase of the lesson looks like, just set, set the scene here. Well, what's the kind of class? What have they done before? Just give us a bit of context for, for this lesson, if that's all right. Yeah, so I'll, I'll try and do macro and micro at the same time so that it can be generalized, but also what we can see what the specifics look like in, in this instance. So this was a lesson that I, I taught to 60 students that I hadn't met before. 60? So that's, yeah, so that's some context. All at, all <laughs> um, at, one, all at once. All at once. <laughs> um, so there's some context here that I don't know these students. So there's a, you know, we could play this episode back in September, maybe when people have new classes and it might, it might make more sense. A lot of this would be applicable even for classes that, that you know. Why, why are um, you teaching 60 all at once? Uh, that's a great question. It was, it was, I was, I was, I was visiting a school, uh, and it was, a, we, we collapsed all the foundation year 11 students. And it was a quick way to do two things. One was to, to teach them something which had come up as, as something that they, they performed yep. poorly on. And then the other was, instead of hearing me talk about what on earth I mean, when I talk about these things, some of the teachers could also observe nice. this, this process happening instead of me delivering it two, three times throughout the day, let's just collapse it, get them all there. Um, and it was weird, like the different, it being 60, I don't think it had an impact on it being 30. Um, I think there's a certain point where the, it, yeah, it didn't, didn't really matter. Um, I can't go around and check 30 people's work, so I can't check 60 yeah, people's yeah, work. So yeah. it's all used to the mini whiteboards. Yes, those checks maybe took a little bit longer, sure. but um, but yeah, maybe that's how we fix the recruitment. <laughs> maybe, thinking, yeah. maybe. Okay, so there's the context. I love it. Right. Well, what, what do you want to do? What's the best thing? Is it if you tell us what your how you first started thinking about that lesson? Is that the place to start? Yeah, let's do let's do that. Um, so so it's expanding single brackets, which, which can be taken. So I guess it was thinking what what's the hardest possible question that I might want to get to within this within this lesson. I actually back myself up and said, okay, well, let's have some factorizing if I need it. Um, but I'll go to expanding brackets where there's two letters uh, that make squares or cubes happen and that there's negatives all over the place. But I'll stick to one term outside the bracket and two inside the bracket. Um, so it's like, what's, what's the hardest it could get to? And then what skills do I need um, students to be able to, to, to have mastered in order to access that? That, that appropriately. So it was, it was tracking back from there, doing um, sort of that, that atomization process. What, what are all the little bits that the students need? Can I ask you just two quick questions on, on that, if that's okay? So it's interesting that, well, first, I think it's, it's really smart to think in terms of where you want the kids to go. And again, that's kind of the, or get to, I should say. And that's kind of the opposite of what we were talking about, about what we used to do, right? It was all about the task. Whereas now, where do we actually want the kids to get to? And then let's shape everything else around it. Um, so I do two things, one of which it sounds like the same as yours. I think what's the, the kind of hardest thing, I call this the kind of, what's, what's the kind of aspirational question that if everything goes well, I'll be able to give to the kids at the end and they'll have a shot at being able to able to do it. And often this is kind of a, it's not a procedural style question. Often it will be, you know, something a bit different, you know, a, a, maybe, maybe it's an exam question. Maybe it'll involve a different bit of maths. I, I don't know, but it'll, it'll be what I call an aspirational question. But what I'll also have and what will precede that is I call it kind of a core question. And this is, what is the question that I hope every single person in this class will be able to get correct at the end of the lesson? And just practically speaking, that then forms the part of the last question I ask, whether you call it an exit ticket or whatever. Does, does that thinking ever come into play, Craig? Do you ever think of what's a question you want everyone to answer? Or is it always, let's aim towards this kind of hardest question, if that makes sense? Yes, no, both, both, both those things. Um, yeah, where, where, where am I going to draw the line at saying no? We're hammering away until you can do this. Or where am I going to say, okay, look, if you don't know that x squared times x to the power four is x to the power six yet, I'm going to let you off from from this. Mm. Um, I think it is important to have both in mind, but it also links back to to preparing for the unplanned. And it might be that you need to scrap that final question yep. if the lesson just doesn't 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 go as uh, doesn't go to plan. I think the the other the only other thing that links to this lesson as well, and actually to any lesson, is is there any model that's going to be used? 
which will be seen throughout the curriculum as well. So I'm going to talk a lot about the grid method in this method, uh, in, in this lesson. And there was no point in me doing that if kids hadn't seen it or, or weren't going to want to see it when they expand double brackets mm. and factorize and all those things. So is there a thread which links to other parts of the curriculum as well? Um, and is that thread robust enough? So sometimes when I see people mm. teach lessons on rearranging equations and they teach the like the function machine, like going yeah. forward yeah, then yeah. going back, like as soon as you've got three over X oh. equals something, what is your function machine? Yeah, yeah. As soon as you've got unknowns on both sides, what is your function yeah. machine? So, so, so planning what what model I need I need to be using um, in the lesson as well. Can I just ask a second thing on that? So first, just to kind of recap, there it sounds like we both start with thinking in terms of a question that we want to kind of get to, and I think that's yeah. The, the more I plan and the more I work with, particularly novice teachers, I think that's a really kind of sensible approach. It helps you shape and focus everything that comes around it. My my second question before we dive into the nitty gritty. You said before that you think in terms of planning lessons, not 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 necessarily sequences. Have you thought at this stage what's happening after this lesson, what the next lesson is going to be, what the next, and how does that feed into your planning? Yes, sorry, you need to think about both simultaneously. Yeah. Where is it all going to go? But also, what what can I tie a nice little bow on yes. in sixty minutes time? Yes. Um, so yeah, so the, the the slide deck that I brought into this lesson had about. 40 things on it and, and would eventually have gone on to factorizing. Um, I didn't think I was gonna get onto it. I ended up not getting onto it, but it was there. I, I knew where, where this was going. 